Hey, how's it going? It's George. We're eating church. We're with you again. Stop mocking. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're here at the end of the year kind of doing a recap of what we've been doing in uh, 2016. And I'm here with a good friend and a friend of the ministry, uh, Brandon. I want to say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Okay. And he's, he's very annoying when it comes to actually asking him to say things. So, But anyway, we're kind of just here. We're looking kind of at a review of what we've been doing in uh, 2016 and kind of what we're going to be looking for in 2017. Uh, uh, this is the first year that uh, Eden has actually uh, moved forward. And so we, we, we've done a lot of teaching. A lot of stuff has been the, uh, the basics, the, the ground floor, if you will, the building a foundation of, of what we're about and what, what we want people to uh, understand the, uh, the, the ministry that God has called them to and that he's called us actually to help people move forward in ministry. And so we're just going to take a little bit, kind of review some of the stuff we've been through um, and, and we've, we've been teaching. And so uh, that's, that's why he's here, uh, kind of to say, what are some of the things uh, that I guess benefited you through this first year of, of, of uh, this ministry uh, that Eden has been doing? Uh, it's really like what you said earlier. It's it's about setting that foundation. And that's what a lot of the uh, series was with the Believer's Authority. Um, and then going on into the Unseen Rim, which was just kind of like, you know, eye-popping, shocking. It's stuff that, that you kind of read, but you really don't pay that much attention to. Because, mm-hmm. you know, words, small things. We, t- we take for granted. We, it, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, and then moving on throughout the rest of them. And it, it really was, it really is kind of just setting that foundation. It's like, yes, we say we're Christians, but what does that really mean? You know, uh, and how do we apply that to to our lives as we move forward? Okay. Yeah, because uh, a lot of times, and what I've been experiencing with people throughout this, well, really my, my whole life, but really this year really opened my eyes to, is that a lot of people don't actually um, know how to read scripture with the understanding that Jesus would want them to have. I think a lot of people read it as a point of, well, I'm supposed to read the Bible. You know, well, I'm supposed to do this. But, and it's, it becomes something where they think, if I do the religious thing, which is to read the Bible, because, you know, that's what we all talk about. So let's do the religious thing, and I read the Bible. But the thing is, you read without understanding. And so I, at that point in time, I'm kind of like, why bother? You know, I don't want to know a good fried chicken recipe. I want to eat good fried chicken. Yeah. You know, and so... I want the benefits of it. Yeah, and so uh, really getting into Scripture is... Uh, you, you want the benefits of it. You don't. You don't want to read for reading's sake. You actually want to experience uh, uh, Jesus. You want to really experience God and, and what He uh, He desires for your life. And so, uh, kind of when we got kicked off, really, we we at the very start of the year we were in uh, Galatians, and that kind of morphed right into the believer's authority, which was kind of that first teaching, which. Uh, spirit, soul, and body is uh, the fundamental teaching, really, I believe, of this ministry. It's If you understand that, then you kind of understand everywhere else we're going. You know, it's kind of the, uh, the the main uh, thought or main uh, focus that we have on here. And so what were some of the things you got out of, let's say, just talking about the believer's authority, uh, where we talked about spirit, soul, and body, and we... We talked about uh, um, using our words, and, and uh, you know, uh, and we also talked about man's uh, God created man to be uh, and have dominion over the earth. Like, what are some of the things you got out of that? That maybe maybe I got everything wrong out of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's possible. Um, but oh, I would say the the key thing that I got out of that series, Believers' Authority, is. Um, I am a spirit, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. I am a spirit. <laughs> I have a soul, and I live in a body. Yeah, fundamental. The, the very basic fundamental thing. I because once I understood that. Wait a minute. Okay, so my body is not, uh, not my body, but I am not this body, this flesh that's that's right here before you. 
I am not my my uh, my mind, will, and emotions. You know, my soul. I am actually a spirit that was birthed from above. You know, by Jesus, and it's just it's it's one of those things. It's like okay, it's all about positioning. That's why I felt that's the word that I was looking for earlier mm-hmm. in this is positioning. Where it where do where am I positioned in Christ? You know, and, and what does that mean? And knowing that that I am a spirit who has been made perfect by Christ and I have the Holy Spirit in me. In fact, the Holy Spirit and I are one. It's it's <clears throat> it's it's just one of those things where it, it, it really put put things in a new perspective for me that I never really thought about before. Yeah, the spirit, soul and body. And, and what he said is and he laughs at the at, I am a spirit because uh literally for about a year and a half i was going around saying this uh like a mantra to people where i was just like uh people would come up and say i'm mad and that's all i can be because that's how i am and i'm this and 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 so many people say that so many people they assume they are their mind will and emotions which is what your soul is made up of and and so i would tell them i was like no you're not You are a spirit. You are spirit. That's what you are. If your spirit left your body, there would be a corpse on the ground. Like there, Mm -hmm. there'd be nothing there. So, I mean, you, you know, but, uh, the thing is I would go around saying you are spirit. You have a soul, you live in a body. And so I don't let things that I have control or dominate me, you know, uh, I have a guitar, but the guitar makes no decisions on, how I feel about something or what I am going to do. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I have a car, but it doesn't tell me what I am, who I am. You know, it, these are things that I use. And so when people get to understand that, there's a lot of people that are struggling with uh, uh, addictions and they're struggling with uh, uh, emotional issues and problems because they think they are that emotion versus understanding they are a spirit that's been made whole, that's been made pure, and that's been made a uh, uh, brand new <laughs> by God. Mm-hmm. And so um, when we get to understand that, we start to begin to understand that when we read scripture, scripture is actually talking to one of those three areas in our lives. It's, it's either talking to directly to our spirit it's talking to our soul, it's talking to our mind, will, and emotions, how we should operate, uh, or it's talking to our body. Mm-hmm. And so when we understand that there are certain things that are said in Scripture that we could look at and then say, oh, I can get better understanding uh, from what Scripture is saying if I understand who, my, who, who, who this word is talking to. There was another thing we talked about in the very beginning is that this is a, the Bible is a spiritual book written by a spiritual being to spiritual spiritual beings, you know? And so when we understand that, man, God truly is trying to communicate with his people. He's trying to communicate to you. And he uses this uh, scripture is the contents uh, of his his will and his mind toward things. So you can get an understanding of who he is, you know? And so, uh, you know, that's what I I really think believers authority. Uh, and these are all things you can go to Eden, uh, okay.tv. Uh, you can go to the website, Eden, okay.tv and you can go back and look at all these. We, we, we archive them. Everything's online. So you can go back and check this out. But, uh, I believe that was one of the things I spent a lot of time on the Believer's Authority. Twelve episodes. And I and I think I actually did it because I, I had spent three and a half years on the next thing we went into, which was uh <laughs> the unseen realm. Wow. And and uh I, I spent literally uh three years in, in, in reading and research and thought and thinking, am I crazy? Man, I don't know if I should do this. I went through all of it. I went through the gamut of emotions was there like, no, this is right. But man, people are not, ooh, you know, you know, you know, because so many people's thoughts about, 
Well, it, it came to this deal where I, I, I and, and, and Brandon's like somebody I'll talk to about things to kind of just like somebody that I'll bounce off. Dude, I'm, I'm thinking this. Like, I don't know if I should think that. You know, it's like, uh, but I, I mean, I, I see, and you know, I kind of, and, he, and he'll be like, eh, he goes, well, mm, well, I mean, it did say that. No, dude, that's off. You know, and so it's a, you, everybody needs that sounding board, somebody they can talk to to be like, but I was sitting there, I was telling him, I was like, <clears throat> God didn't come to establish another religion. Mm-hmm. Like me following Christ is not religion. Me preaching the gospel has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with I have a relationship in which I speak to Almighty God and he speaks back. And he leads me into doing things and he leads you into doing it and the relationship is developed. But so much of what we read from scripture, we create religion out of it. And so, uh, and the religion is our ability to see where God was versus the relationship that we have with God seeks where he is. It seeks what he is doing. And so uh, in the unseen realm, uh, I, I basically reset what many people have thought this is how things operated Mm -hmm. you know and and this is how the bible works and and i was like no you know uh, (laughs) and and that's the part i have struggled with because i'm not trying to i don't want to lead people somewhere wrong i want to lead people to the truth i want to lead people where it's like look at this and so when we start looking at that we started with the left top to kind of wet people's whistle but basically showing people that jesus is the left top And that over 9,000 times in the Old Testament, the left tithe appears when the promises of God appear in the scripture. And I'm like, well, that's a mighty big coincidence Mm -hmm. uh, because maybe it's not a coincidence. (laughs) So I don't know. Talk. You got to talk. Say say something about anything at this point in time. About anything at this point in time? Yeah, well. I mean, you were on a roll. I was going to let you go. Um. Yeah, unseen a left tithe. That one, I'm I'm still I'm still chewing the cut on that one. I think out of all of this, all of the um, I, the episodes, sermons out of unseen realm, the left tithe is still one of those where I'm just kind of like, mm, yeah, that makes. I'm I'm still you know kind of like putting things together. Um, as far as that, maybe because I don't have the Hebrew placemat reader thing that it, people the, mock me. About the Hebrew placemat. But I'm going to learn Hebrew better. Because food is involved. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Unseen Room, like I was saying earlier, is just one of those uh, things where, I mean, because we were talking about it before you had uh, actually did the thing. And then during the Believer's Authority, um, you're in, in the middle of it and you're like, Brandon, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Unseen Room. And I was like, what? You're going to? You're going to go for the jugular? It's too soon. It's too soon. It's too soon. Don't do it. You're going to make people lose their religion. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> they're going to come, out, gonna come yeah. after you with pit, pitchforks. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you kind of just, because really actually one of the things here, even, I really want people to lose their religion. I want them to, I want religion kicked out. Religion binds people. Religion causes shame. It, 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 it it furthers guilt. And literally everything I read in scripture, which when you free your mind from the religious crap that has been shoved down people's throats, when you free your mind from it and you start reading that, you know, that he says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So I'm trying to figure out why do you not feel free? There, is it a possibility because the sun has not set you free? Yeah. You know? True. I was like, when, when I read that, that, that it was God in Christ, in other words, it was the Father in the Son reconciling the world, not counting their sins against them. 2 Corinthians 5, I think around 17. But my point is, is that clearly right there, 
The Father is not counting your sins against you. But what does every church preach? You're a sinner. Sin your wife's a sinner. Your kids fornicate and sell dope. You know what I mean? It's just, it's they, they <laughs> preach sin. They make they make the good news. I'm kind of moving forward then into like paid. Bam. Okay. I like they make the good news about sin. And it's not about sin. It's about the fact that God is truly anointing you with himself. He's Man. rubbing and smearing into you himself. And you're free from sin. He's not counting your sin against you. But, well, no, the more you think about your sin, the more you realize God is good. No. Yes. Yeah. No, and, and, and the thing is, he, he said, he goes, you are the righteousness of God in, in him, in Christ. I was like, the father's not mad. No. Religion will tell you the father's mad. You didn't, you didn't kneel the right way. You didn't, you didn't pray the rosary long enough. You didn't, uh, you, you didn't read the right version of the Bible. You didn't. There's all these things that it's just like they want to heap guilt and shame on you. When God's like, no, I want you to live in me because I've got better things for you. I got better things for you in Christ. It's 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 one of those things where it's oh, it just makes it seem so people make it seem so difficult to be a Christian. Or people make it seem so difficult to follow after Christ. Or people make it seem so difficult to have that relationship with Christ. It's, uh, when, when you think about it, and that's this coming on the heels of the unseen realm. Um, with, with this one, I thought this one was just like, wow, okay, he's, George has really hit a stride with this one. Because I don't know if it was because you did all the, laid all the groundwork with Believer's Authority and then Unseen Realm. It's kind of like that bird's eye view, kind of tying everything together. But with this paid business, it was you have to realize that, yes, Jesus came and he had to deal with the sin. But the sin is not the reason why Jesus came. Say that one more time. <laughs> no, that because that's the thing people need to hear. Well, <laughs> say, yes, the sin had to be dealt with. Yes. But that is not the reason he came. That is not the reason he came. I mean, if you, he came so that we may have eternal life, John three sixteen and whatnot. And then in John 17, I believe it's verse three, he defines what eternal life is so that you may know the father and the one whom he sent. So it was the relationship, that same walk that the same walk that Abraham had with, with God physically, that's what God, in fact, he did it. He did one better. He put Jesus on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. So it, it's, man, this is, it's just incredible. It's, and, and this is what the paid did. It just, it just blew my mind. And that's why I'm at right, right now with this. Yeah. And I had people, uh, um, um, writing in when, when paid came along because I, I was, I was literally the scripture will define scripture. That mm -hmm. is the one thing that I've, I've been through. And that's, the, and, that, and that's the thing that people, they, I think sometimes they get mad at me about also people who want to hold on to the religion because I'm not really, you, you know, they're, they're coming up with some ideals that don't have anything to do with the, the scripture. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, no, scripture will define scripture. I had people, one, I had a lady tell me one time that, you know, we'll, we can't understand what God is, is wanting or doing. And I and I think we were we were reading in Corinthians. I think it was uh, Corinthians chapter two, First Corinthians chapter two. And I was like, "We can't understand. We can't understand." I go, "Okay, read the next verse." I go, "Read one more verse," and it says this. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit. I was like. So you're supposed to be the one of the leaders in this church and you were about to tell everybody we can't know these things and literally scripture tells you in the very you stopped one verse too short. Yeah. 
And so that's what happens with a lot of people. We stop one verse too short. And with pay, I, I, I set out to show people that that uh, this was about Jesus and the God, the Father, Yahweh. This was about him fulfilling a promise that really started in the garden, after, uh, just after the mm-hmm. garden. He, he spoke the word of prophecy, but really Jesus coming was really about fulfilling the promise to Abraham. Jesus made Abraham a prom- promise in, in, in uh, uh, Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, especially where the covenant was actually cut. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was about covenant, and it was about a cut covenant that, that, that God said, I can't swear by anything greater because I am the greatest. I mean, you know, and that sounds like arrogant to like humans. I, I am the greatest. Nope, you're not the goat. You know, <laughs> God, God, God gets God gets the glory on this one. So he's like, I can't swear by anything greater to kind of show you that I would do this. So I'll swear by myself. I will, I will make a covenant with my own self that this happens. So that by two immutable things, it tells us in Hebrews, two immutable means two unchanging things. Mm-hmm. So by these two unchanging things, they 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 neither change. You know that if they agree, then it's got to happen. Yeah. You know, uh, because we don't change. And so uh, pay was sent to show that if if the gospel tells us in Galatians was preached beforehand to Abraham. Well, Abraham didn't get any talk. There's no word about talk of sin to Abraham. Yeah. So what gospel did he hear? Because we were told he heard the gospel. You know, yeah. so so it would seem to me that if they're going to come back later in Galatians and talk about Abraham here in the gospel, uh, God maybe would show that to us like that wouldn't be like something that was left out of scripture. Yeah. You know, and so uh, when we look at what was actually preached to Abraham, it was only good. It was only prospering. It was only I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. I'm going to. I, I'm going to be with you. He only spoke good things to him, which is amazing because gospel literally means good news. Good news. Good news. You know, too good to be true news. You know what I'm saying? Gospel is not you're a sinner and you're an idiot and you should just be happy that I even look at you. But I'm not really going to look at you. But I forgive you. But I barely forgive you. That's not good news, people. (laughs) And that's what people have been trying to preach to people is that, you know, you're a sinner and you're a whore and you're awful and you need to come into the church and I'm going to continue to call you in the church a whore and a sinner and an awful person and you just better take it until you die so that way you can get into heaven. It's It's not the gospel. That ain't it. The gospel is good news. It's good news. The Father does not count your sin against you. And that's, once again, we didn't found out that the reason he doesn't count your sin against you is because he wants better for you. And he's wanting to restore you the things which you lost. And the thing that most people don't understand is what did we lose? I, I'm going to ask you, now this is off the cuff. What, did, what did we lose? What did... What, then Jesus come to restore. It says he comes to restore those things which were lost. What was actually lost? Our authority here in this earth. Oh my goodness. Our authority here in this earth. Yeah. When, when you understand that's what God came to restore. He came to, he yeah. said to Adam. Well, he didn't even say it to Adam. He said it to his divine counsel. Let us give man dominion, complete control Mm -hmm. of the fish of the sea, birds of the air, anything that creeps upon the earth, everything in the earth. Man gave that away, foolishly, but Mm -hmm. gave it away. And Jesus came to restore, to set things back to righteousness righteousness is not you committed a sin you didn't commit a sin it's nothing to do with your behavior 
it's about the operation of something. Okay? They use the term righteousness in aeronautical engineering when they talk about an engine. This engine is righteous. This engine is unrighteous. It's about its operation. It's about it works like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. This engine is righteous. This engine is not working like it should. It's unrighteous engine. I was like, that's what righteousness is about. And, and Jesus came to set things right. Right is you having authority in this earth. You know, and so uh, from that, we moved into say it with your chest. Because if you start understanding, uh, it, was behind us. it was it was there, you missed it. You got to be quick. You know, uh, you, you had saying it with your chest is basically uh, now that came from my girls. Uh, we I, I have one girl who has no problem telling me exactly what she wants, when she wants it and how she wants it. She's like, I want this, you know. I want a peanut butter sandwich now, you know, type of deal. I have one girl, though, who's like, you know, well, if you don't mind, well, and so when she started doing that, I'd be like, man, what do you want? Say it with your chest, girl, you know? And she goes, I want a candy bar. I was like, okay, see, all right, see, we know what you want now, you know? And so say it with your chest really came from that, but it was basically understanding that we've been set right mm -hmm. and that we have the authority. You know, if y'all notice, all these things are kind of building on one another. But what, what ended up happening is like, you have to start speaking the way God would speak. It tells us to have the faith of God. Um, and, and, and so having the faith of God is God was a spirit that spoke. Mm -hmm. You being set right, you're a spirit that speaks just like God. Now, the only difference is the only place you have authority to speak and it becomes so is in this earth realm. So where God can speak anywhere, because why? He's God. He created. So he automatically gets default, mm -hmm. you know, understanding of things. But he, he gave you the authority of this area. And by him giving you the authority of the area, he's not then dealing with the world. Oh gosh! Oh, you yeah. just said something now. Yeah. So he, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he's not dealing with the earth. He's not because he gave authority to man, and, and as and as a person who delegated the authority to man, he's like, y'all handle that. Handle what up? You know, uh, you know, if there's a problem in the earth, God just doesn't come fix it. God's like, what y'all doing about that? He looks to you because it's yours. Yeah. This, I mean, especially in, in, in the area of, uh, of a, well, really anything, healing, finances, but specifically healing, because that's a little bit easier for, I guess, everyone to understand. Um, this whole business about, can just, I would love it if someone was to show me in the Bible, well, God said, pray for the sick, or Jesus said, pray for the sick. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, I'll talk my head, I can't think of a place where Jesus said, pray, pray for the sick. But every time I see Jesus and someone's like someone's sick or there's healing that needs to take forth, he would actually go and do the healing or he would tell people, hey, you go heal this person. Or when he sent out the 72 disciples, hey, you, y'all, I give you guys the power and authority to go cast out demons, you know, heal the lepers and do so forth and so forth and whatnot. You know, and it's and it's one of those things where it's. Things won't happen if if we don't realize the authority that, that that we have, but also we have to speak that authority. It's not enough to know, but you have to have the wisdom to use it and to speak it forth. So speaking that authority forth, that's why I'm saying say it with your chest. Basically, use what you understand, and that's where scripture comes in. That's where reading God's mm -hmm. word comes in because the words that don't fail are his words. His words are spirit. They are life. Mm -hmm. They're the, that his word, uh, when we speak his word into a situation that, and believe that those words that we just spoke will come to pass, that's what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I am going to clarify a little something. What he just said about, yeah, there, there is a couple of scriptures where it talks about praying, pr pray for the sick. 
in that, you know, I'm thinking of James in, in, in particular where it talks about the prayer of faith will save the sick and that whole deal like that. But what what and what he's under what he's talking about in the understanding of that is people then say they they pray to God for something God told you to do. Yeah. Okay. And just like with my children, I never do anything I told them to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take out the trash. I do 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 not go and take out the trash. Now, they may need help taking out the trash. I mean that that's understandable. But I am not going to do the taking out of the trash because mm -hmm. I told them to do that, which means I they have the ability to do it. They have the they, and they can do it. So if they come back to me talking about, well, I don't want to, I can't take the trash out because you know so. Do, do, do. I'm like, well, that don't mean nothing to me. I was like, I told you to go take the trash out. I suggest you get on doing that. And I'm saying a lot of times you hear, okay, here's another falsity of religion. God says no. I mm. cannot find in scripture where God ever says no. God says all his promises are yes and amen. Like he doesn't say no. You just ask for the wrong stuff. Whoa. You... You ask him to do something that he's sitting there saying, um, you have the ability to do that. And I use the example of my youngest loving to cook shrimp uh, in, in those things where I talked about. <laughs> yeah, was good. And I told her at the point where I was sure that she knew what she was doing. I said, okay, anytime you want this, you just come on and make yourself some shrimp. So when she came to my chair that one day, Hey, Dad, can I make some shrimp? Hey, Dad, can I make some shrimp? And I didn't respond to her. And then uh, uh, I was asked, how come you're not responding to her? She said, duh, duh, duh. I was like, that's how God is working with many of the people. Y'all are praying things. And he's like, I've already given you authority to do. So go do. You're, you, you're not waiting on God. God already gave. Mm-hmm. You're not waiting on God to save your family or save that member of your family. He's already saved him. The work on the cross, he's not going back to the cross again. No. Now, you may need to pray for uh, laborers to come across the path. He told you to pray for that. But when you, I'm telling you, when you pray certain things and then y'all say, well, religion will tell you, well, God knew the intent of my heart. He knew what I meant. I was like, that's not what he's not working off the intent of your heart. He's working off what you said. And if you were to say, God, send some laborers across that person so they can get saved. Oh, that's a different prayer than God saved that person. God's like, I already saved that person. Mm -hmm. If they choose to accept Jesus. You know, and so we have to get the, those understandings of that. And, uh. You know, finally, one of the things we kind of went through uh, toward the end of this year, mm -hmm. God or mammon, whom will you trust? And really what, man, I'm going to tell you this year, uh, you know, like we just, I started this ministry on faith. That That's word. Okay. Like, um, there was not like a, a, a nest egg. There wasn't a like, oh, well, you know, we got, you know, I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in my disposal that I'm just going to start. No, man, we started this on faith and there were lean months and there were good months. But what I learned, George, personally this year was about giving and, and that understanding of that I needed money a lot of time. I needed cash, you know. Uh, but the thing is, is that cash can easily become your God. It, be, it can become whom you look to supply things for you. Mm -hmm. And really what God showed me through the, the, the series God and Mammon was that God wants to be your supply. God is your supply and he's the abundant supplier. And uh, he never runs out. And no matter what the situation is, uh, you should be turning to him. Yeah, I think with this with this series, it was 
what struck me the most was it's it's really not about money it's about trust mm-hmm. yeah, it was like who are you going to put your trust in or better yet who is your source who do you see as your source do you see your eight to five or nine to five or in my case six thirty to like eight o'clock <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you see do you see that as your source do you see your job as your source uh do you see your spouse as your source god wants to know do you trust me in the least? And that's what the Bible says that money is, 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 is the least of, of, of the least area of faith. Before you can use your faith, money is. So he's just like, can you trust me with your, the least things? And it's, it's one of those things where I had to reprogram my mind to re- renew my mind if you will, to see God as my source, even though money is coming from here, it is still God that gives me the ability to go out and give and and get the money. I think in Proverbs, it was just like a, oh, what was that? Help me out here. Uh, He gives you the power to get wealth. Well, that's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Proverbs. Deuteronomy 8.18. Remember that. Deuteronomy 8.18. Go read it. It's, it's It's some good stuff. But yeah, it gives you the power to get wealth. So he, he, he gives you the life. He gives you the breath. He gives you all that stuff. To You have the power to get wealth. But it's like it's like George said earlier. It's very easy to see that wealth or see that money as that source and forget about God. Forget about God being that source and supplying that source. So I look at myself now and I'm thinking, okay, I don't make money to pay bills. I don't make money to do this. I make money so that I can give knowing that God is going to... if. If I whew, see, there's just so much in this. There's just so much in the series. This is I'm getting all kinds of turned around, but it's 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 it was one of those series that I had to, I I like seriously just chewed on a lot of stuff, learned a lot from. Yeah, you know, and so you know, I sit there and, and, and we talk about uh, uh, I, I I have this thing where I'm talking about I I I basically live on my giving and. Uh, and admittedly, even my wife was kind of like, you know, a little tripped out by that statement because it's like, you, you can't, you can't just give everything away. You just can't give and get, you know, I was like, yeah, I go, no, I, no, I can't because I I am reestablishing what my source is. Mm-hmm. And when you start to see, uh, your life as, you know, this has come to me as seed to like plant. Like if, if, if you're sitting there and you got, uh, um, let's say wheat, you can do a lot of things with wheat. You can take a wheat kernel and you can ground it down and then you can make flour so you can make bread, right? Or you can take that same seed and go out and then plant it in the ground, okay, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the thing is, is you can eat your seed or you can use the seed you have to plant to grow more seed. Okay, and God does not matter if you have some of that seed you eat and some of that seed you plant, but the but in the measure that you give, that's that's the measure you're going to receive in. Mm-hmm. So if you only go out and plant an acre of of a wheat, you're only going to get an acre's worth of return. Whereas if you go plant ten acres of wheat, then you'll get ten acres of return. You know, that's, that's uh, a lot of return. And so the thing is with God and Mammon, what we went and looked at through there is that, you know, you actually live by your giving. You actually, uh, I, 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 there was one, there was something that took place, um, in that where, uh, I started seeing immediate responses, uh, because my, I really took the, my giving, even though I did not have the most that I've had, um, you know, in other times, mm-hmm. but my giving went up way more than it did even when I had other things, other resources. And then what I ended up seeing happening is toward the end of the year, I started seeing all these resources start coming to me. I started <laughs> I started seeing, you know, other opportunities. I started seeing other things. And they just started, it was almost like it was just heaped on where I was like, oh, man, cool. I started saying, I'm never going to lack again. I will not be in lack ever again. Man, God is my source. I, I am focused on him being my source and that mammon is something I use to advance the kingdom of God here in this earth. It's not something that I rely on in order to uh, make it. 
Yeah. I, I make it and I, because because God doesn't call me to make it. He doesn't call you to make it. He mm-hmm. calls us to be more than abundantly supplied in him. So he calls, he calls for the excess and the overflow. Religion will tell you that, uh, you know, being poor, that's godly. No, that ain't. I go, I, I, and it'd be, it's awesome when I just go through scripture. When I went through, now what you're probably thinking about in Proverbs, when we went through and I talked about wisdom, and I says, wisdom is like, dude, if you have me, I will cause you to inherit wealth. Now, that's very mm-hmm. uh, forceful of wisdom. You, if, if, if I have wisdom, wisdom says I'm going to cause you to inherit wealth. I am going to put money in your treasuries. Mm-hmm. The, you sure are arrogant, wisdom, trying to force money on me. I'm trying to be poor and religious. No, well, that's why I ain't trying to be religious. You know, I'm trying to get the gospel out. And, and that takes cash money, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, and so, I, you know, I'll explain to people that giving is something, when you want to do the minimum, that's what your return is going to be. Mm-hmm. But I'm wanting your heart. To, I, I, there's something that when you start to see the benefits of being generous, okay, the generous soul waters, and in turn is watered, is what scripture says. And so when you start to see that you can be a generous soul, you're going to start to see God start to water your life like never before. He's going to mm-hmm. send the former and the latter rains all at the same time just to get your harvest to you and increase you. So uh, that's what we've been basically doing in, in 2016. And I'm looking forward to 2017 because yeah. I'm wanting to take some stuff a lot deeper. Uh, some of the stuff, you know, I went through and I had some prayer time. And, I, you know, I was kind of going through and, and looking at uh, where I wanted to go and what I'm wanting Eden to do as we move into the second year's. Uh, this next year, I at least want to have what I call four seminars. Uh, we're going to uh, take a like a Saturday, uh, uh, and we're going to have where we're going to have a get together. You know, and the, the first one is probably going to be sometime uh, in April. Uh, I want to be able to have a get together. Uh, probably, uh, we'll, we, you know, probably meet in a hotel uh, someplace. Uh, you know, like in the conference rooms and stuff like that, and. Uh, we're just going to get together, we're going to worship together, and then we're just going to you know, grow, grow in the Word together. Um, and then uh, we're going to do that a couple times. I want to, by July, uh, um, start to meet maybe on a monthly basis, still doing those uh, quarterly seminars uh, where we kind of get together. But I want us to start, a, a, I guess, you know, um, coming together and learning together the Word. You know, uh, even though the ministry is called Literally Eden Church, it's not that I'm trying to start a church in the respective form of what you see as a brick and mortar on the corner. What I'm wanting is, I'm wanting a group, it really, we're looking at church as it's an assembly. It's a group of believers that we're coming together and we're learning the word of God. Because I, I've found uh, that if I, if you have the word, if you can get here and you can start hearing God uh, for yourself, God is not going to lead you astray, mm-hmm. you know, and that uh, you can, uh, uh, that there, there are things you're going to learn that aren't about religion, that aren't about, well, do it this way because we said do it this way. Uh, now, you can talk to, now, Brandon's been around for a minute, you know, uh, and I mean, have I? Have I? Done? I mean, I just always want to make sure, and now this is me putting him on the spot again. I don't think I've ever, like, said, this is what you got to do. I, I, I think I've tried to just put out the word to you. Like, like here, here's what, this is what the scripture says. And Have I forced you to ever get into the Bible? Have I forced you to open up your book and say, no, read like, no. Oh, no, you ain't, no, oh, no, you haven't done it. No, no. He's, you know? he, no, he's never done that. You know, I, exactly. I, I've just tried to say, this is where the answers are. You, you want to find that answer out, this is where you can go look. And that's what we want for mm-hmm. anybody else is we want God to grab hold of you, God to grab your ear, and you move forward in him. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so in 2017, we want to see God, you move forward in him. 
one of the first uh, series uh, that we're going to do. Uh, I know I told you, but I'm forgetting right now which one it was. But no, it's uh, the songs. It's like, it's, could you forget that one? <laughs> no, it's not. I just, but it was. It's called the songs. Uh, I, talking it, about this for two months. I know. Well, I'm talking about the songs of the Bible, but I'm really not going to do all the songs of the Bible because I, I God really kind of. I was like, there's once again, it's so it's so rich. It's like. When you really get into the word and you really start to see like, oh my goodness, the breakdown, there isn't one. It's just, you just got to do this. But we're going to look at uh, Exodus 15, the song of Moses after the children uh, defeated uh, uh, and were freed from Egypt. And we're also going to look in uh, Deuteronomy 32, um, which uh, if you remember the unseen realm, that's a worldview that this ministry takes. But Deuteronomy 32 is another song of Moses that was actually meant to be a witness against the uh, children of Israel as they went forward, as they were in the land. Hmm. What we're going to look at there is there are a lot of simple, a lot of similarities between uh, the the children of Israel and I call them the pseudo church. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, similarities. There's a lot of things that man have they if they would have actually just listened to the word of God, and just done things the way the word said do it. Um, there's a lot of problems that they're having right now that they wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I, I, we're gonna we're gonna talk about those. And we're gonna expose those. And we're gonna take our time. It's kind of almost like the first of the year. We kind of take our time in series. Like, you know, Believers in Thorns, we took like 12 episodes. Probably could have did 20 episodes if we really, you know, if I really stopped and broke some other stuff down. But we're going to take our time in that. And then from there, we're going to move to a series called Pray the Word. Because what I've found is a lot of people really don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, people just think, well, you can say anything. And, and. Yes, you can say anything you want to God. It does not mean you will get a response. You know, yeah. you know, God is looking for you to return his word to him. He's like, man, return, your, return my word. My word will not fail you. And, and, and it was the prophet's jobs back in the day to give the kings something to say. You see, so mm-hmm. they would go and they get the word of God and they say, king, pray this. Pray this way. And so that's what would happen is they would go and they, they, you know, they pray the words of the Lord back to the, to the Lord. And it's interesting. They had a high success rate of having their prayers answered. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a lot of people. It's like you, you, you're praying for things and you're, you're praying for people and you're, you, and let's be honest, you're praying for stuff and you don't see the answers. And I'm telling you, you don't see the answers because God's like, I have a way that you need to pray. You need to seek me. This is how you will find these things. This is how I will hear you. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it tells us clearly in that. I think it was uh, in uh, First John where it talks about um, if you pray according to uh, the will of God, he hears you. And if he hears you, you have your request. The will of God is his word. Pray pray the word. Pray the word. You know, so we're going to spend the first few months uh, uh, exploring those two things, the songs of Moses and, and praying the word. And uh, I, I believe that that's going to be, uh, these are going to be two areas in which uh, there's, there's great growth ahead. And so, man, I want to thank you, uh, Brandon, for hanging out and recapping. Thank you for having me, George. I sure do appreciate it. Well, you gotta bring out you gotta bring you out every once in a while just for the, the, the shenanigans and whatnot. Uh but once again, uh if you haven't joined the ministry as a part of giving, I wanna uh I wanna ask you uh to give. Is uh, you can go to Eden okay dot TV E D E N O K dot T V on there, literally on every page, there's somewhere where you can give to this ministry. Um, 
I want to tell you that we, we're not asking for giving for the sake of like, we got to keep the lights on. I was like, God <laughs> richly supplies, okay? Amen to that. What I'm telling you is this, is that giving into this ministry is, is giving into good ground. And there is a return that you can expect. And so for you who haven't ever really given, you've been a part, you've taken part of the ministry. You, in other words, you've heard the teaching, you've heard the things. And, and what I'm telling you, it tells us in Galatians that those in Galatians 6, those in whom you take part of their ministry, like you, they give you spiritual things. It literally says you need to give them physical things. So mm -hmm. um, this is a way of giving and receiving. We're giving to you. And it's your turn. Give to this ministry uh, and, and start the process of growing in faith with your finances. Okay? It's the least thing in the kingdom. So you can do that by going to EdenOK.TV and giving to us. And then also there, there's all the sermons. Uh, all the sermon series uh, are on there. They're available to be watched, uh, you know, at your leisure, you know. Uh, but uh, we we look forward to 2017. We're, we're, we're excited, and uh, we hope that you all have a great day. God bless.